is my boy. So sweet you are. Uh, hello, baby. How are you? <laughs> he is so adorable, Mrs. Sidarsky. Thank you, Daffodil. <laughs> uh oh, someone's hungry. <laughs> Who'd like to help me feed the baby? <laughs> <laughs> How about if you all help me? Bye. 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 Wow, it must be really cool to have a new baby brother in your family. It has its moments. Lucy, aren't you going to help feed your new brother? No. Why not? What's the big deal? He's just a baby. All he does is eat and sleep and cry. I was a baby once too, you know. Me too. In fact, I was the one and only baby of the house. Until Clifford came along, that is. Did you like it when he came? Of course she did. We had a great time together, right, Daffodil? Well, to be honest, um, I really wasn't so crazy about you. Not first. Huh? You weren't? What was it like when Emily Elizabeth first brought Clifford home, Daffodil? Well, I remember the first time I heard there was going to be a new baby in the house. It was Emily Elizabeth's birthday. As usual, I was the center of attention. Oh, <laughs> You're the best bunny in the whole world. I love you, Daffodil. Kids, time for cake. <laughs> I am a great bunny, aren't I? Happy birthday, Emily Elizabeth. Make a wish. Yay! You didn't wish for a puppy, did you? <laughs> a puppy? That's exactly what I wished for. Well, Mr. Bradley's dog had a litter of puppies last month. And he'd like to give you one. If you want one, that is. <gasps> oh, yes! I do, I do! Oh, thank you! Oh, isn't it great, Daffodil? We're getting a puppy! The two of you are going to be best friends. I just know it! Emily Elizabeth was right, wasn't she? You are best friends. Well, I do kind of like the little guy. Now. But it took a while. At first, I couldn't understand why Emily Elizabeth would want a puppy when she already had me. <laughs> what a sweetheart. Coochie, coochie, coo. Oh, isn't he precious? What a good puppy. So precious. Yes, he is. Good yes, boy. he is. I love you, Clifford. Oh, thank you so much for the best birthday present ever. <gasps> well, now, look who's here. I think Daffodil wants to spend some time with Clifford. Go on, Clifford. Go say hi to your big sister, Daffodil. Aww. Aww. He really likes you, Daffodil. I'm sorry, Daffodil. I know we usually play together in the afternoons, but I have to take Clifford for his walk first. I think I'll come along. Me too. I could use some air. Come on, boy. Let's go for a walk. Isn't it wonderful having Clifford here with us, Daffodil? Wonderful? I didn't think it was at all wonderful having Clifford with us. And then it got worse. One afternoon, Emily Elizabeth took us both to pet day at the library. Did you bring that wonderful little bunny of yours again this year, Emily Elizabeth? I sure did, Mr. Solomon. Hi, Hi Mr. Solomon. Solomon. Oh, so cute. 
You know, Daffodil's visit last year inspired me to write my book, A Honey of a Bunny. Did you hear that, Daffodil? You're a star. Woo! Who is this? This is Clifford, my new puppy. Everyone keeps saying Clifford is so little and so cute. Hey, maybe if they see how little and cute I am, Emily Elizabeth will realize that she doesn't need Clifford around anymore. She might even return him. They're very precious. You can't ever push them on the floor like that. This is one of my very favorite books. It's all about the different types of bridges that can be built. Oh, oh I know bridges! Wow! wow. Hmm. That's one beautiful bridge, isn't it? Oh, wow. <laughs> wow, this bridge is really big! It's amazing how different all these bridges can look from one another. <laughs> look at Clifford! Daffodil! Daffodil, no, Rue, you're too big to do that. Hey, Daffodil, I'll get you out. Just calm down. You're okay now, Daffodil. I've got you. Fortunately, our book is okay, too. I'm so sorry, Mr. Solomon. I guess Daffodil just didn't realize what a big girl she is. Gosh, Daffodil, I'm sorry. I didn't know it was so awful. It wasn't awful. I just thought it was. Emily Elizabeth still paid lots of attention to me, and she told me all the time how much she loved me, but I just wasn't used to living with you yet. Well, it sure sounds like it was awful to me. The truth is, Lucy, I was just jealous of all the attention that Clifford was getting, and I didn't want to share Emily Elizabeth with anyone else. I know what you mean. So, what did you do? Well... One day, Emily Elizabeth came home and announced, Daffodil, Clifford, it's a special day today. Clifford has been with us for one whole week now, so I brought you each a present to celebrate. I'm so lucky to have both of you. Emily Elizabeth, come on, it's time to go. I'm going to the store with Mom right now, but I know you two will be just fine here alone. After all, you have each other. I don't want to play right now, Clifford. Whoa! Oh, it's just thunder. What is it, Clifford? Are you scared? <laughs> well, come here, little guy. <laughs> Don't worry, that's just thunder, Clifford. It happens a lot when it rains. Wow, that's a great story, Daffodil. And now Clifford is your best friend. He's more than my friend, Lucy. He's my brother. I mean, you just gotta love him. Oh, baby, shh. Hush now, hush. What's the matter with him, Mama? 
Nothing really. The baby's just very cranky and I can't get him to stop crying. Don't cry, baby. I'm Lucy, your big sister, and we're gonna be best friends. He stopped just for you, Lucy. <laughs> of course he did. He's my brother, and you just gotta love him. <laughs> A story, Clifford? Okay, pick one out. <laughs> Thanks, Clifford. This looks like a great story. Today's story is Speckle and the Brand New Toy. Speckle had just gotten a brand new toy. He loved playing with it because even though it was very small, it was a whole lot of fun. Naturally, Speckle couldn't wait to share it with his friends. But when Ravi, Luna, Reba, and Darnell all showed up together, the friends wondered how they could all possibly play with such a teeny toy at the very same time. But then Speckle got an idea. He thought of a way that all of his friends could enjoy the bubble maker and its beautiful bubbles at the same time. Using Speckle's great idea, the group found that one tiny toy led to lots of big fun. The end. I love reading stories together. You know, Clifford, for such a small dog, you sure are a big reader. <laughs> Up, up, and oops! Emily Elizabeth, Nina, come on! Let's check out the trains! Wouldn't it be fun to build one of these? It sure would! Kids, those kites are great, huh? They oh, sure are. so neat. Uh-huh. Then you should come to the special kite flying day we're sponsoring at the park next weekend. Everyone will be flying kites, including me. Well, have fun looking around. Thanks. We will. See ya. I think I might have just enough allowance to buy one. Me too. How about you, Shun? I have enough, but I also have an idea. These books are called how-to books. How to? How to what? How to make stuff. Like kites, for instance. Oh, uh, you mean instead of buying our kites, we can make them? That's it, exactly. If we put our money together, we can buy this book and learn to make our own kites. Sounds fun to me. What do you think, Clifford? Ruff, ruff. Ruff. 
<laughs> I guess you think it's a good idea, too. Well, we've double-checked the instructions in the book, and it looks like we've got everything we need to build our kite. We've got sticks cut out from the orange crates, thanks to my dad. And we've got glue, string, paint, paintbrushes, wrapping paper, and all my favorite stuff to decorate my kite with. I've got glitter, buttons, ribbons, photos, you name it. <laughs> now all we need is shoes so that we can get started. Here I am, and I'm ready to go. What's all this stuff, Shun? It's Japanese washi paper and bamboo. My mom took me to a special store to get them. I'm going to make a traditional Japanese kite. It's beautiful. I love it. I'm going to make a box kite. And I'm making a two-stick frame kite that I'm going to decorate with all my cool arts and crafts supplies. Great. Let's get started. Okay. I folded the paper. Now what? Place the stick inside the fold, but remember to work carefully, as the sticks can be easily broken if not used properly. And the delicate paper can be easily torn. Oh, I won't tear it. Only one or two decorations are suggested, as too much weight may cause kite to fly with difficulty. Only one or two? But I have a whole bucket! Use caution as you place the sticks and wrap them securely. Remember, a carefully built kite flies right. <laughs> right. There! I'm finished! And I'm finished too! Oops, not quite. I think my cut needs one more thing. Like I always say, you can never have enough glitter! I still have some painting to do, but why don't you guys go test your kites out in the courtyard? Great idea, Shun! Meet us down there when you're done! Gosh, my kite feels kind of heavy, but I'm sure it'll fly just great. <laughs> Look, Clifford! Whoosh! Whoosh! Oh no! My kite! It's got a rip in it. But it's such a little rip. My kite should fly just fine. Come on, kite! Fly! Up! Up! And... Oops! I guess our kites aren't exactly flying, are they? No. But wait, maybe it's because we're not running fast enough. I think I know who could help with that. <sighs> I think that maybe that hole I got in my kite is a bigger problem than I thought. I think that's why it won't fly. And I think my kite won't fly because it's so heavy. I should have just picked one or two things to glue on my kite. And I guess I should have followed the directions. Especially the part about how you have to handle kites carefully. Ah, oh, the wind's perfect, isn't it? Oh, it's beautiful, Shun. You did a great job. Thanks. I can't wait to fly it. Let's go. Come on, let's fly our kites together. We'd love to, Shun, but our kites won't fly. I ripped a hole in mine because I wasn't careful. And mine, well, it's just too heavy. But what about the special kite flying day at the park? We were all going to fly our kites together. Can't you both make another kite? I'm sorry, Shun, but Nina and I used up all of our materials on those kites. We should have been more careful when we were building them. And carrying them. But now we know. And now we don't have any kites to fly. Wait. I know. We can all fly my kite. Come on. Oh, okay. 
Thanks, June. My, you certainly did a wonderful job on your kite, Shun. It's beautiful. Thanks, Mom. I really like making it and flying it, too. Oh, I, I see you still have plenty of Japanese bamboo and washi paper left. What do you plan to do with it? Gosh, I, I don't know. Maybe I'll make more kites after I've flown this one for a while. Well, the paper is just beautiful. I'm sure whatever you use it for will be really special. Hmm. We'd love to, Shun, but our kites won't fly. Really special. Emily Elizabeth, Nina, let's get started. Yes! <laughs> We don't want to be late for kite flying day. Oh, your kite turned out great, Nina. Thank you. This time, I really followed the directions and only used one decoration. And your kite turned out great too, Emily Elizabeth. Thanks, Shun. This time around, I'm being extra careful with my kite. I didn't twirl it once. I'm sure glad I had enough bamboo and washi paper for, well, everybody. <laughs> and I'm glad I had enough for you too, pups. <laughs> You're the best. You're welcome. I have a feeling this will be a day we'll never forget. Me too. If you'd like, you can borrow my sock spider for a while. Wow! Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. Just take good care of it. We will. Clifford and his friends know that when they borrow something, it means they're responsible for it. Ugh. Yuck, I hate rain. Me too. Ew! The sock spider. Clifford said to take good care of it. We can't leave it out there. It'll get all wet. When you act responsibly, it shows that you care and that you can be trusted. That's why Clifford's idea to grow on for today is be responsible. Clifford's sock spider is all safe. All dry. <laughs>